So, can you hear me? My mic is on. Good afternoon. I call to order this meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. And I call forth Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. And if you could please take us to our first contract. Yes, uh, we have quite a few this evening. Um, or this afternoon. The first item, JBO 722.18, Total Solutions for Law Enforcement Security Facilities Management, Fire Rescue Clothing, Marine Craft, and Emergency Slash Disaster Response. This contract modification will continue to provide for the visitor identification system known as RAPTOR site license fees and supplies for school and offices. Approval is requested to extend the contract for five years and increase contract spending authority by $760,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $910,000 with one awarded vendor uh, previously or last approved by the board in May 2018. Great. Do we know which portion of the modification amount is for new schools? I noticed that the funding source is the operating budget and I'm curious as to whether this is funding funded for new schools through operating or capital. In, included in the 185, we have currently 175 and so we have planned for uh, the growth, the, the new schools plan to open within the period of this contract term. So that is not included in the projected capital cost, but rather is covered through our operating budget. Right. Now there'll be a line item in the operating budget for startup costs and, as an, and that will be covered for that school out of its startup costs. So it's in different pieces of the operating budget, but it's all operating. Okay. And one other question, what is the anticipated life expectancy of the equipment itself? I noticed that this covers replacement of the scanners, I believe, if I read correctly. Yeah, if uh, Ms. Lewis is here, she may address that, but um, within the five-year term, we expect that some devices will have to be replaced. We have a one-year warranty. Them are lasting three years or more. Okay, so the um, projected or expected um, replacement cost would be on a three-year replacement cycle. Generally, yes. Generally, unless we need to fix them. Yes. Thank you. You're Board members, other questions? Mr. McMillian? Yes. I was a little surprised about the total contract expenditures, expenditures to date are $8,625. That seems low, but what time frame is that? Yeah, this is just since May of 2018 when we last uh, brought the contract forward to be extended because in waiting for the uh, GSA contract to be renewed. So we have uh, the last full year spent $150,000, $152,000 for the last uh, complete fiscal year prior to this contract. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, I think we're ready to move on. Okay. The next item, JMI 919-15, Cohort Digital Learning Teacher Leaders. This contract modification will continue to provide a master's degree cohort in educational technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $30,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $210,000 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in April 2015. Thank you, and this increase I understand is based on Loyola's increased cost per credit hour from $250 to 300 
it's actually not an increase from Loyola, but a negotiated increase in the tuition reimbursement rate for our teachers. At the time the contract was written, it was $250 a credit. About a year ago, it became $300 a credit. They're entitled to that in the, in the reimbursement. Other questions, board members? <coughs> Mr. Kuhn? Um, the only question I have is how much does it cost per credit from Loyola directly? They um, usually negotiate a rate so that the teacher has no out of pocket cost for their tuition, so they match the $300 uh, credit reimbursement per credit. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? Thank Save you. None? Thank you. Ms. Rowe? Uh, about how many teachers participate in this? 20. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The next item, MBU 50515, maintenance and repair of warehouse equipment. This contract modification will continue to provide for the maintenance and repair of warehouse equipment for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services and other offices. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $50,000, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $225,000 with four vendors approved by the board in October 2014 and through December 31st, 2019, when this contract ends. Okay. Any questions? No? Moving right along. Do you want to do yeah. this, sir? Good afternoon. The next contract, KSH30819, is application of new technology to document construction and utility services during construction time. Uh, this is really uh, very helpful to us in documenting everything that's going on as the construction is proceeding. Uh, we have used it on a pilot basin on a couple of projects, and other school systems are using it, so it's going to be helpful to us with so many other construction projects coming online. Um, what other school systems other than Howard County are using this currently, do you know? Uh, I don't know all of the name, but Howard County is definitely using it. Okay. Were any other cooperative purchasing agreements considered from other service providers that you know of? No, I don't think so. That, that's the only one that is uh, current, but we have used them as part of our construction management services. Okay, so, so within the know. state of Maryland, within other possible agreements, you're not aware of other providers of similar services? I'm sure there are. We can get a list of them, but I don't know offhand. Okay, I'm just curious as to what the advantage of this particular provider were given that it This was has the highest quality that our uh, uh, reviewers have looked at. This also has um, is demonstrated use by other school systems. We have looked at the quality of work that they have done for us and they are reputable vendor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. McMillian? I'm curious, if you and I went to one of these construction sites like Berkshire or Colgate in District 7, we could walk around and they, they actually have cameras mounted on the construction site and there's somebody in a central location that's actually it could, if they wanted to or needed to, pull up that documentation and, and read or watch those videos or whatever? That's right. That's exactly what it provides. It has several different camera angles. It's taking pictures of what's behind the wall. It's taking pictures of utilities when we are putting it during construction. So if there is any litigation, if there's any change order, we have additional access to that information. And of course, at some point, you have, do you have an inspector that stays on site during the entire process or no? Uh, we have an inspector, but this is a different company right. that's doing it. So ins inspector is looking at the operation of those cameras. And, and seriously, at some point, I would like to go to some of these construction Absolutely. sites with you. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll be glad to do that. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? So if what I'm hearing is correct, the purpose of this software is to provide more accountability in the tracking of projects? It's, uh, that's correct. So it's, it's, it's more than software is taking pictures of okay. actual conditions. So is th this is going to help us get projects done on time and on budget? 
I'm not no. sure if it's going to help us do it on time. It's not going to increase the speed of construction. Mm -hmm. it's, going to, uh, it's going to improve our documentation of the process. Okay, so does this help us with accountability for contractors then? Yes, it okay. does. It does. Mr. Kuhn. So um, what's exactly the value of this? It sounds like it's taking pictures as things are being built so that we can say, yes, you did put the wires there and everything else. That's it gives us the ability to see things and, and retrieve it later on. So if there's a change order for which contractor should have done it, but he didn't do it, we have the ability to prove it that this is what happened. So it's just use of technology that we didn't have before. And there is some very minimal cost to it. Okay. So so it's five hundred thousand dollars for these three schools? No, this five hundred thousand dollar contract is for a period of one year contract with option to renew it for two years. Within this five hundred thousand dollar, we'll get a proposal for each construction job. And from our experience it has been in the range of twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars in that range. So for a fifty million dollar project to be able to document what's going on for a period of 18 to 24 months, uh, it, it is of tremendous value to us. So uh, just to follow on, yeah. these pictures and videos that you're taking, um, where are they stored? Are, is this, and, and the reason I ask is because that will be our property yes. after Yes. The projects are finished, yes. and I'm, you know, we need to retrieve it. We may need to retrieve it far in the future. So my question is, where is that information going to be stored, and is it platform agnostic, meaning we don't still have to have a contract with them to actually go back and look at it? No, we'll, we'll have, they will provide the storage capability, and we'll have access to it. Okay, so just so I'm clear, if in the future we decide to no longer contract with them, We'll How do we all access of, our data? We'll, be, we'll have the ability to get all of that information to us. All right. All right. So they're managing their platform, yeah. providing the service, yes. and they're recording and saving all of the data. Yes. And we'll have access to that. Right. We have access to it for yeah. as long as we're contracted with them. Even when the contract is terminated, we have access to it. Okay, and that's, I just want to make sure that's written in the contract because if these guys go out of business... We'll for some make sure that it is written in the contract. We'll oh, make okay. sure that, yeah. Good. Okay, Mr. McMillian has his hand up first. And I'm just, and back to an example, if, if they were doing, say, sewer work and they were laying their sewer pipe and it was being filmed or photographed or whatever, if there was an issue with the sewer pipe later on... We'll have the ability to, to yeah. pinpoint where yeah. that is located. That's, that's what I want yeah. to know. Right now we have to look for it. Yeah. This will provide us exactly the location. The drawing gives you a general uh, vicinity of the utility line, but this will give you exactly where it is. Yeah, and, and if, the, you know, let's say it was just a 12-inch pipe or 15-inch pipe or whatever, and if they downgraded and try to use a 12 or 10-inch pipe... We'll know about that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank and, you. And we'll be able to prove it. And that's, that's, that's a very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rowe. All right, so just to make sure that I understand. So primarily what this is used for is to make sure that however we think the contractors should be doing things, they're actually doing it. Yes. And if they do something that's not the way they're supposed to, we have the ability to check up on them currently in real time. Is this used to potentially fix these things in real time or do we wait for litigation, or I mean, I like the fact that we have something that we're doing to hold contractors accountable for their work. I just want to understand. Yeah, it, it gives us. If that's what this is. You are absolutely right. It gives us the ability to see what's going on there right now, but even more important, what he just mentioned, that we can go back 18 months down the road, two years down the road, and exactly find out what is there. Has any consideration been made about sharing this information publicly? And the reason I ask is I was at a stakeholder meeting recently and the specific you know, photos, videos of our projects in progress were exactly what 
um, some stakeholders were asking for, or is there reason why we, we wouldn't be able to share this? Because of safety considerations, we have been very careful about what is public information and what is uh, private information. So if the board ever wanted that information, obviously it'll be available to you. But even when we put the drawings on websites, we are very concerned about the safety. And security. That, I think there is a balance there, and I would be interested in making as much you know, infor of this information as possible without jeopardizing yeah. that safety available to the public, because they are engaged and yes. are curious and, yes, and would like that. to see our projects in progress as much as possible. So I thought I'd pass along that yeah. information. And that is understood. Given the format of um, these videos or photos, is that something that could be easily done? Is it something we've explored? And we is can, that within yeah. the scope of this contract in terms of deliverables? Let us think about it. We'll talk to our safety folks and whatever can be done without jeopardizing our safety. Uh, and I'll talk to the superintendent about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, you know, again, we have to be very careful. This is what we did with our safety manual as well, which is only why we only published um, how many volumes? Three of the uh, the eight, um, three of the five uh, volumes of the safety manual. If somebody's um, really kind of insistent on doing harm um, to our schools and to our students, we certainly don't want to give them the roadmap to be able to do that. So we have to be very careful with the pictures and the photos that are posted, um, the blueprints that are out there, um, because they could, you know, if somebody is planning to do something, they could use it against us. Certainly, we want our parents and community members to know that we have a process in place, that we have a way, the board has a way of um, um, ensuring that the projects are being delivered on time and being delivered in a way that is acceptable to us based on our standards. But we have to be very careful about what we actually publish um, based on that school because it could be used against us and against our kids. Thank you. Board members, other questions on this? No? Oh, Mr. Kuhn? So um, this sounds really cool. And um, is this becoming um, a widely adopted construction practice? We have heard of other, other organizations doing that. Our experts, our staff looked at it and um, obviously found it to be useful to us in a very cost-effective manner. Mm -hmm. And then um, another question. So this is not really a construction question, which is what you'd be focused on, but if, for instance, um, the system wanted to make a video that's a, a massive time lapse of the actual construction. Is that something that we could do with this video and, and, and what you're going to have? Um, uh, I'll I mean, there's no limitation on what we can do with the video. It's ours, right? Yes, there's no limitation. Okay. There's no limitation. It is very impressive technology. When we looked at it, we said at such a reasonable price, we are getting tremendous value. All right, thank you. Great, thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. You want me to continue? Sure. Hearing none, next contract, please. Uh, the next contract, ARA 20619, is for mechanical pump repairs. Uh, this is for uh, heating, ventilation, air, uh, and air conditioning system. There are pumps throughout the building. When they uh, are old, sometimes they need repair, sometimes they need replacement. So this contract is used for repair of pumps. Any questions? No? Next contract, please. The next contract, KSH31219, is for boiler replacement at Battle Grove Elementary School. Uh, these are old boilers and needed replacement. This contract will provide labor and material for replacement of boilers. Uh, the old boilers are more than 20 years old, so they have lived their life. The new boilers are going to be more efficient, energy efficient, and they'll have less likelihood of any failures. Okay. Questions? Ms. Rao. What does it mean alternate one is included in this project? If you look at the bid tab on the second page of this exhibit, uh, there is an alternate 
which is replace electrical panel board in boiler room and uh, alternates in construction industry. We use it to manage cost. It will be good to have the new panel board, but if we didn't have the money, if the bids were higher, we will not, we'll not include it. And when we got the bids, the prices are reasonable, so we accepted that ad alternate. Mr. Kuhn. And this is, um, these boilers haven't failed, right? We're replacing them on our normal schedule because they're, they're aged out, basically, right? Yes. And they are not normal schedule is perhaps not the right term because they are, if you have a fixed schedule of replacing boilers, we have a lot more boilers that are just as old as this one. Uh, our needs far exceed the availability of funds. So we have to make a determination as to what it's not only old, but it's malfunctioning. It is not reliable. So this is one of them. So when you say on a fixed schedule, no, we do not replace boiler and chiller on fixed schedule because we don't have the means to do it. Okay, but any, at any time, I mean, the maintenance is ongoing and staff is like, oh, this thing's not gonna last much longer. We need yeah. this one to be replaced. This and then we took a look at them yeah. all and then you bring those forward. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So with that being the case, I, I mean, equipment, I guess it has variable end of life type of issues, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, you're saying these are old and they're, they're end of life. We need to replace these while there could be you know ones that are the same age but they're still working okay yes, i mean sure. is there kind of like a a normal time frame when we're talking about boilers and chillers that they usually last 20 to 30 years at the most yes there there is a range of life for every building system okay but some go beyond range of life hmm. roof being a simple example uh, there's a 25 year old warranty and some roofs fail earlier than that some fail a lot later than that. Okay. So is it, my real my real question I'm trying to get to is, so there's there's kind of an underlying liability, right? We have we have aging um, systems that you were discussing, and we're repairing ones that we believe that they need to. But but there's more out there that there's that, more out there. Okay. Yes. Like I said, our needs far exceed available mm -hmm. funds, okay. and by several times. So we are always trying to make the best decision. That means this bowler has either failed or very close to failing and has a bad history of maintenance request. And, and then my last question, and, and we can move on. Um, you said that, that, that our needs you know, far out or exceed uh, our means. Um, do we have a, a document or some type of um, view into that, that very thing you just mentioned? We don't have one right now, but we are continuously working on it. For some building systems, we have better data than the other ones. For example, roof. Uh, we have a very good idea about uh, how many old roofs, how many in poor condition. On the other building system, the work is in progress. Okay, thank you. So I would second Mr. Kuhn's question. That, that would be helpful information for the board to have as we consider our upcoming budgets to know what is that unmet demand and how should we and, and we are be working. meeting that. Yes. So and that will be information and we'll we be continue requesting. to work on it. Sure. Isn't there a ten, was a ten year plan? Oh, yes. There, there was a building assessment study that is on our website, but it doesn't go into the details of systemic. It gives you an overall condition of the building but it doesn't go into what boiler needs to be replaced or what chiller needs to be replaced. We haven't gotten to that level. And we would be interested in the expenditures um, needed in, in terms of perhaps a three to five year plan yeah. and how we are moving forward toward that because it's one thing to, to replace as needed. In an ideal world, we'd like to get ahead of that and make sure that we're allocating appropriate funding to the, meet the assessment needs. study that we talked about, the GWWO, that is the last document we have where a detailed study was done to study the condition of the building, and that's available on our website. And there's a proposal in the FY20 budget for a 10-year capital plan. Mm -hmm. I doubt, I don't know to if it will get down to the level of boilers and chillers. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. It depends on how we write the specs and how much it costs to include it uh, at that level. It would help be helpful to see that projected out, and that report does not include the financials behind the necessary replacements. So. Yeah, it does not. Mr. Kuhn? I'm, I'm sorry. Did you, say, did you say that we're going to create a report that's going to pull all that together? We are, we've requested funding from our state and local funding uh, authorities to retain a, con to a consultant to provide that information. Uh, basically, it would be an update uh, of the 2014 study, okay. along with long-term planning for capital requirements on a larger scale. Is there, is there a reason why we wouldn't pull this together ourselves? Well, it, it needs a lot more resources than what we have. In addition to trust and credibility. So we want to make sure that we have the, an outside view so that um, it's not that we're making these decisions, but that it's one that it's objective and it's one that's based on the facts and it's based on the data that's pre presented and we want it to be a trustworthy report for the public. Right. And that makes great sense. I guess my only point is, we have people everywhere, and we should know, like, if these boilers are these ages and what types they are and things like that. We could gather all that data and make it immediately available to whoever comes in. We're not expecting them to go out and figure all that out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We, we have some information. Okay. Ms. Rao. I heard you say long-term capital plan. Correct. I have been asking for that for years. And I really, that if people watch this, I really hope our fiduciary authorities actually fund it and do it because we need an independent long-term capital plan to know what all the needs are because I think it's fair that every area of the county should be able to point to a document where that need is outlined and where they have some idea when there's a projection to meet that need. And uh, it, will this be a living thing so that as the need changes, as population changes, this document will be updated? Do you know that yeah. or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say I'm that, ahead of myself. Well, I'll yes, I was going to I'm say that if Ms. Rowe Absolutely. is actually we'll later tonight, so got it. Okay. Yeah, I was going to sorry, say, I have this. I was going to say you're actually kind of stealing my thunder from I'm the budget sorry, proposal I'm uh, tonight. Sorry, uh, but <laughs> uh, but you know, I, this is like Christmas to hear that from me. Yes, yeah, it's, it's part of the budget proposal tonight, so you'll hear that during open session. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So if you don't have any more question, I'll move on to the next contract, which is ARA 20419, and is for boiler replacement at Featherbed, Featherbed Lane Elementary School. Uh, these bowlers have lived their useful life. Uh, they are more than 20 years old, and we are gonna replace these bowlers with efficient bowlers. There are five, there are four bidders for the job, um, and the, it's funded by capital budget. Okay. Questions? Ms. Rowe. When I see on these forms and it says that section where it says number of bids received and then it says no bids, what does that mean? No bids means that uh, all of the, um, nobody declined to bid. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Kuhn? So are, are boilers all extremely custom? No, boilers are designed, but boilers are custom. They are made by manufacturer. But what building needs what size of boiler and what kind of piping and associated equipment is needed, that requires design. And, okay. bo and board has approved uh, consultants and architects, and we use their services. The reason I ask is because the prices on the two boilers are different, yes. and I've, I'm just asking because I'm wondering what's driving the variability. Yeah, that's a good, that's a that's a good question. 
boiler is not there sitting alone by itself. Mm -hmm. It is supported by pipes, pumps, motors, condensers, whatever is needed. Mm -hmm. So when you change a boiler, you change the most efficient supporting system, and it requires a new design. Different size of buildings require different type of boilers and different equipment. So is this, is our system and, and every boiler so variable that it, that they're all going to be different? I mean, we can't just they're sit there and say. They're all going to be different. Okay. Because yes. that just doesn't sound efficient to me. Yeah. Uh, each building is unique. Each building's site is unique. Each building's electrical system is unique. And that's the nature of this, this whole thing. Okay. And what kind of variability should we expect? I mean, we see a few, you know, see, see a few in here, but what is the range of, of costs for this type of service? You mean for, for the construction? Not the ones you're showing, I'm just saying in general. When you're saying, oh, we gotta replace a boiler in school X, $250,000 to $300,000, is that what we're talking about each time? I think for this size of school, the, the amount that you're seeing is a good estimate. Okay. Okay, but if it was a high school, it would be a larger boiler, and it would be a lot more than that. And anytime we do it, we'll bring it to your committee so you'll get a chance to see it. And these are all independently bid, so a lot of this price is also market condition. We see it with all design, all construction project, that de depending on the market environment at any given time, the fluctuation could be as much as 20, 30, 40 percent in the price. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Hearing none, next contract. The next contract, JBO 70419, is for chiller replacement at Shady Spring Elementary School. These chillers are old and they are, they are uh, in, in need of replacement. They're about 20 years old and this contract is for replacing the chiller with a new chiller and all associated equipment and piping. There are four bidders, so this good competition. Great. Questions? Nope. The next contract is LKO 42218 for partial roof replacement at Hillcrest mm -hmm. Elementary School. Again, it's capital project and the roof is being replaced in the older part of the building. Uh, that, that was 1993 addition. It's 61,850 square foot of, of a roof that is going to be replaced. Do we know the age of the portion of the roof that is not being replaced? Uh, the, the, the roof of the 2011 addition, which is the new building, that is not, that is still under warranty. Still under warranty. But the roof of the older addition, older part of the building is mm -hmm. not under warranty. It is old and it's leaking. Thank you. Ms. Rao. Do you have a rough idea of what percentage of the roof coverage that's being replaced is? It's, uh, it's uh, 61,850 square feet. What percent of that is the total roof space? The total square footage of the building is, uh, of the building is 75,800. So this is most of the roof? Yes. All right, so that explains why it's almost the cost of a whole new roof for a whole school. That's right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. McMillian. I'm curious, is there, a, is there a square footage price that they use in commercial uh, construction with something of this size? And residential, often you hear they'll say so much a square foot when they're talking about building a house. Yeah. Is it something similar with a roof? It's, a, it's, it's different cost per square foot for different buildings. I'll give you some examples of recent schools. For Essex, it was $23.77 per, uh, per square foot. For Middlesex, it's $26.02. So it's been in the range of 23 something to $26 per square foot. Uh, so, but roof has more than just roof. It has drains, it has flashings, and different job required different amount of work. But this is a good estimate of 23 to $26. Okay. 
Yeah, and I'm just curious. Last fall, they finished Chesapeake High School's roof. Yeah. Do you have that number in front of you, the square footage? I don't have that number. I was just curious. Yeah, you don't the need larger the roof, perhaps there will be economy of scale. There will be le lesser price per square foot. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Rowe. So, Rod, if you want a rough estimate and you look in the gigantic binder, you can see the estimated cost for a bunch of roofs. Yes. And, I mean, it kind of ranges from this to, like, close to $3 million. Yeah. Is that about right? Like, yeah. there's kind of a range. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? No? Okay. Um, for the next two group of projects in the interest of time, if it's okay with you, I'll give you a little bit of background. This is Berkshire Elementary School. Uh, it has about uh, 10 packages. Uh, this is a construction management project. It's a new school. Uh, it was approved by the board as part of the capital program. It was designed and by a private architectural and engineering company, and it's been reviewed by our staff and has met all the state review process, a very detailed process. Uh, out of the 11 packages, we are sending 10 packages for your approval today, and the remaining package will follow later on. If the, the school is going to be completed in August 2020. It is similar prototype that we have already used before. In case of Berkshire, this prototype has been used at West Town Elementary, Relay, and Honeygo Elementary School. So with that, I'll just quickly go over the contract, and if you have any questions, I'll answer those questions. Um, uh, the packages that are here are for general construction and specialties, testing and inspection, site work, utilities and demolition, masonry, structural steel, roofing, drywall and acoustical, painting, food service equipment, and mechanical. The package that is not here is electrical that we'll bring to you later on. So with that, uh, uh, if you have any questions or if you want me to give you any other information, I'll be more than glad to do that. Okay. Mr. Kuhn. So how do we manage um, security requirements? Security is part of the design. Um, we, uh, every school has uh, cameras, uh, entry systems, and the drawing is reviewed with our, se our security department and with the architects. So it's all included in there. We have, we have standards for security, and we keep upgrading the, that, those standards. Okay, thank you. Okay. The, con the, con sorry. <laughs> the contracts are related to Berkshire. Well, um, what is the total amount of all of those contracts and what percentage is that of the spending authority? I guess my real question is, are we on budget? Yes, we are on budget. Okay. Okay. Other questions? No? Okay. Moving on. Okay, thank you very much. If you don't have any questions, I'll move on to the next school which is Chadwick Elementary School, uh, similar to Berkshire. This has 12 packages. Uh, today, you, have, you are looking at eight packages for approval. We'll, we'll come back for the remaining four packages. This is part of the capital improvement program that board approved it. And the design was completed by board approved architectural team. It's been reviewed by our staff, and it's been reviewed by state. Uh, preliminary design was presented to board in the May 8th meeting, okay. and uh, we are requesting eight pa approval for eight packages. The project is within budget, and we have done similar prototypes at other schools, which is Mays Chapel, Lansdowne, and Dundalk Elementary School. It is the same prototype modified to fit the site. If you have any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer. Mr. Kim? So when you, when you talk about prototype, you mean basic design? Yes. Okay, so in essence, we're not, you know, 
We're using exactly the design, but... We are not using exactly the same design, but we are using the same concept, and we are fitting it on the site that we are building on. Okay. okay. Um, what is the total cost of this school? The, uh, we don't want to talk about cost in the public session because then we lose competitive advantage, but the total project cost is in the range of 44 to $46 million. Okay, thanks. Okay. Good, okay. Next contract, please. Okay. Uh, Am I still on the next one? Well, 29 is Cedarmere. If yeah, there's one more Cedarmere. Or 28, sorry, is a roof. Okay. Let's see, 28. <laughs> 28th ARA 216.18 is for roof replacement as Johnny Cake Elementary School. Uh, again, it's the old roof that we are replacing. It's one of the systemic projects um, that the board approved as part of the capital program. Um, the original construction uh, was 1996. Total size of roof is approximately 54,841 square foot. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? I've got some. Oh, yeah. So am I right on these roofs that we're replacing? We have Baltimore County Public School inspectors that work those sites and are actively on those roofs pretty much every day for X number of hours? Absolutely, there's a fully assigned Baltimore County Public School inspector, and the drawings have been approved by our staff, drawings have been approved by state, and uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a sealed document, and it's approved by, the inspector is there all the time. So there's like one inspector assigned to each particular roof. That's right. They don't have two or three roofs they're responsible for. At the ongoing time, they've got one roof that they're responsible for. No, the inspector has more than one project. Okay. So it's not that he's just there 24 hours, but he's there enough time to m make sure that it is done right. Okay, thank you. And if the inspector needs any help, we provide it to them. The next project so JMI 60719 is for electrical service upgrade at Cedarmere. It's old electrical switching system that is in need of replacement. So we are going to be changing uh, installation of a new 2000 amp 480-277 volt switchboard and 500 kVA transformer. Uh, the coordination will be done with BGE for the replacement of BGE utility transformer, and the project is projected to be com completed by August 2019. There's quite the variance in the two bids that were received. Um, is there? This is the market condition. Market One contractor condition. needed it more desperately than the other contractor. One contractor had a lot of work, and the other one didn't. So this is a good example of uh, uh, market conditions and the contractor. Yeah, this is a contractor we've used on many projects. This um, is a contractor that is pre-qualified and, and the purchasing has the, their own process. Before. Yeah, we, ha we have uh, made sure that they're pre-qualified by county government and also checked references and uh, meet our insurance requirements and if necessary, a performance bond. Okay. Thank you. Board members, Mr. Kuhn. So just to be clear, when this says upgrade, what exactly does that mean? It doesn't mean replace, right? It means improve somehow? Upgrade the electrical system by replacing the equipment. Okay, well I can replace equipment, but it doesn't it doesn't allow the capacity, it doesn't increase the capacity. Is it, this, this sounds case, like it's increasing it, it, In this capacity. case, we have upgraded the equipment. We, this this equipment, um, the installation of 2,000 amps, the replacement of the original 1,200 amps. So 
the original one, the, the, the old one is 1200 amp, this is 2000 amps. The old one is 120, 208 volt. The new one is 480, 277 volt. So it's- Okay, uh, that's, it's, that's good to know. It's, it's not yeah. in your summary, so it's unclear. I guess my only other question is, um, what is the driver for for this large up because it sounds like a large upgrade it is the old it, it, it's failing the it's old electrical system it's failing it's more than uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at 1971 when is the school open so any electrical system which is that old it is not uh, upgraded enough to handle the new new requirement okay Other questions? I think, the next no? one. I think the last one is mine. Yeah. So the last item was uh, carried over from a prior meeting. Uh, JMI 60419 Mathematics Program Review. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide a systematic audit of the mathematics program. Approval is requested for a three year, five month contract with one recommended bidder. And Contract spending authority of five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Ms. Rowe. So, we've gotten a lot of different emails and different um, discussions in the board about this contract, and I think that most of the questions don't really revolve around procurements contracts, et cetera, it revolves more around curriculum type questions. So I'd like to make a motion to move this uh, contract to the curriculum committee and then when they're finished with it, it can come back to building and contracts. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Okay, that motion passed. Um, the recommendation will be that this contract will be moved to the curriculum committee by building and contracts committee. Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Thank you. But do I have a motion to recommend items N1 through N29 to the full board for approval? Is there a second? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. That concludes this meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. Thank you.